AI technology that can duplicate a person's voice and likeness is not just a concern for Hollywood actors and politicians. We're going to talk about how the concept of deep fakes should be a concern for everyone at your company, from frontline workers to the CEO. Next up on Today in Tech. Hi, everyone. I'm Keith Shaw. Welcome to Today in Tech. My guest today in studio is Chris Levine. He is the head of production at Wistia, hey. a um, video marketing platform. Welcome to the show, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Keith. Happy to be here. Yeah. So tell me about like, what is your how does your company utilize video and audio talent for the videos that it produces? Because when we were talking about finding guests to talk about deep fakes, I was expecting experts from the, the Hollywood side and the the uh, the politician, the politics side. But you came up with this this idea that that you were really passionate passionate about uh, getting this this information out to to our audience of, you know, how companies are using their employees. So talk about what you guys do in, in, uh, at Wistia. Yeah, well, uh, we're a B2B uh, video software company. Yeah. So we're making uh, videos. I'm on the video teams. I I'm, I'm lead our video team. We're making videos about making videos. We're making videos for our own product marketing. We're making yeah. support videos. We're making internal videos. And one thing that uh, we hold very dear at Wistia is we want to communicate who we are, the people behind the company. Mm -hmm. um, and so because of that ethos of transparency, authenticity, we've always put our own employees and yeah. people from the business on camera. Uh, we're not hiring actors. We don't need to hire actors. We have real live humans right. and people in this day and age, they want to know who they're doing business with. So we've found um, a huge success in building our brand and building our culture by putting people, even though they're not trained actors and they have their little quirks and they're not sometimes great on camera, but we like uh, you know, celebrating that in a lot of our right, you know, marketing right. efforts. And so what, when did you realize that Suddenly, you, you, you've done a lot of videos, so now you're almost the face of Wistia for, for a lot of these videos, right? Do you get stopped on the street, by the way? <laughs> you know, my proudest moment, I think, as a son okay. ever yeah. was when I got, we call it recognized. I got recognized coming out of a Hans Zimmer uh, concert at the Wang Theater <laughs> with my parents. Okay. Hey, Chris from Wistia. I'm like, yeah. And my dad looked at me. He's like, wow. You really, you really did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm proud of you, son. So you've done enough of these videos where you're recognized on, you know, f by by some people yeah. that, that, that that use the uh, the platform. Yep. Um, but when did you start to realize that this could be a problem with a lot of the AI tools that are are now coming out? You know, uh, the, the artificial intelligence has been moving so quickly. Yeah. And um, the early the early iterations of when you saw Mid Journey and these text to image prompts, you're like, oh, okay, that's that's kind of bogus. I yeah. know this is not real. Then it started getting good. Um, one of our, my co coworkers who I've been working with for a better part of a decade was messing around with some of the AI avatar technology, mm -hmm. where it basically takes a still image of you and um, articulates your face almost like a animatronic. Right. Uh, being right. And, um, and it synthesizes your voice and it can make you say whatever you, it, your input is. Mm -hmm. And so he was messing around with some of that stuff. And he asked me if he could use me as the example. I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm in, I'm in all kinds of videos. Right. And when this AI avatar said, Hey, I'm Chris from Wistia in my voice and my face was mouthing that. Uh -huh. And I didn't say that it was quite, it was quite unearthing. I was yeah, like, I was like yeah. wow, this is, this doesn't feel quite right uh -huh. to me for a variety of reasons. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, and since, since then that technology has gotten. Yeah. The, the early better. stuff was still, you could tell that it was not, it was oh, still yeah. a CGI or it was computer graphics. It wasn't like live video type, type of uh, things, but a lot of the newer av avatars really do look like the actual people. And the, and the, and the synthetic voice is what's really getting scary. Yeah. Good. Very, very, very good. Lots of practical use cases. Yeah but still scary. Do you think a lot of other companies are, are utilizing their employees in the same way that, you know, where they, they grab someone from marketing and they need a video. And so they grab an accountant from somewhere and, and have them do the videos. Do you think that, or, or do you think that Wisty is unique in this? You know, we've been space? preaching that like our whole mentality is get your people on camera. Yeah. You can do this in, there are lots of tools out there to make you look good on camera, to make you not sound bad on camera. Right. And ultimately 
humans can kind of cut through the noise. We know when we're when we're being sold to by an actor, mm-hmm. and it's actually kind of warm and welcoming when you see somebody in their quirks and they're not saying the line reading right. So we, yeah, we've been uh, encouraging more and more businesses, you know, Joe Schmo accounting firm to, right. you know, um, thousand person enterprise company, get your people on camera. And, um, you know, we've been building tools to help people do that right. as well. Um, and of course, you've got the CEOs and the, the big, the C-level executives that probably have been asked to be on video, whether it's uh, communicating to the employees, if you're doing like a town hall meeting or, or giving an executive report totally. or having their own podcast or you know, video interviews at a show or things like that. So yep. the executives certainly have, have to, to be on camera for a company as well. Oh, yeah. Um, and funny thing about getting an executive on camera <laughs> as a video producer. Yeah. They always talk too long. They're like, oh, I don't, I don't need a script. I'm good. I'm, I'm so good. And then you're, you're ten minutes into a two minute video, and and you're like, well, this is my CEO. Like, what am I? I can't really. So you know, oh, I had no qualms of, of of telling people to shut up when, when I was interviewing <laughs> well, those people. It was a nice way of saying it'd be okay. Well, we're good here. Let's let's do something else, or I'm going to ask another question. But I mean, this starts to this starts to highlight the promise of of artificial intelligence. Yeah. And, okay. So. I'll, all right, I'm a video producer. I'm annoyed that, you know, for the 10th time, my CEO said, you know, he can, he can get up on camera and, and, and bang this out in two minutes and we're 20 minutes into this thing. So the promise of AI is like, all right, I'm going to make an a avatar of my CEO. Mm-hmm. I'll tell that, you know, avatar, all right, this is what I want her to say. And I'm going to hit enter. And then the avatar just starts yeah, talking yeah. and that, and that's it. And now I don't have to bother the CEO. I don't have to go through and, and, and micro uh, edit this thing. So the promise like is there for right. even video professionals. Like, wow, that's going to make my life a lot easier. Yeah. But wait a minute, but, is that going to put me out of a job? Yeah. Then you had an epiphany <laughs> of, of sorts when you realized that this technology could be used forever and ever and ever whether you you know are, are with the company or not if you leave the company there's an issue of whether they have the rights to it totally yeah and and so you started developing talent release forms and things like that talk about what you put on that to 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 help prevent this kind of thing from happening yeah well i think at wistia we we're pretty forward thinking in that you know i've been there for over 12 years and when I signed my contract to come on full time, there was already an image release form. Yeah. And that was because we, um, we knew that we wanted to feature people on camera. And this is the nice, this is the right thing to do. Yeah. It's set expectations with your employee and the employer, um, get permission to use your face, your likeness to, you know, market, advertise, whatever. So anybody that joins Wistia has a talent release form baked in mm-hmm. and that, that, you know, get protects both parties. It sets the expectations of the company. Uh, from an employee perspective, you know what they're capable of doing with your image and likeness, whatever. Um, what my epiphany was with, with around artificial intelligence, you know, I am, I am a face of the brand mm-hmm. um, along with a lot of other faces. If I leave, I wasn't, there's no real, it's a gray area, even with legislation, but in the talent release form. Yeah. Now people, can, I can live on. I could leave Wistia tomorrow. I could, I, unfortunately, I could die in a car accident tomorrow right, right. on my way home, but Wistia could still maybe still release new videos with, hey, I'm Chris from Wistia. I want to tell you about this new product right. that didn't even exist. Right. And so that was a little bit disturbing to me. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so what we're, what we're doing is we're updating our release form. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a fair thing for the employees and it's a fair thing for the employer. It's, it protects the employer, but it also sets clear expectations for the employees. And so we're kind of, I'm on a little bit of a mission here yeah. to wake up more employees and companies and companies to yeah. protect themselves. It, it feels like you went right down the middle in term in terms of giving the employees some rights, but also retaining some rights for the employer. If an employer's out there, 
you know, that wants to hold these rights forever and ever and ever of, of some of their talent, should they be just not saying anything to, the, to their employees that they're using? Or should, or on the other side of things, should an employee who's been asked to do some videos, they might not even have a regular talent release form or an image release form, should they start insisting on that from their companies? Well, it's interesting because from an employee perspective, if you're on camera and you're an employee and you don't have a talent release form, if you bring up, hey, you know, I don't really feel comfortable. I don't have a talent release form. I don't know what the company is, what their mm-hmm. stance is, how morally sound that company is. But I bet you there are some companies that be like, all right, you don't need to be in the videos anymore. We don't want to bother with this. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, you don't yeah. need to. So now you're that person's not building their personal brand or they're not getting, you know, that t- that part of their career growth. Um, you know, and on the flip side, if you're the company and you're like, okay, um, I'm going to make all my employees sign this AI talent release form that lets us use your image and likeness, you know, whatever, fill yeah. in the blank in, until the term, your termination as an employee or in perpetuity. Now you have a potential uprising on your hands, like what's happening um, with, 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 with the Hollywood with strikes. Right. So, yeah. like, and, and so, uh, you know, it's definitely a line. And I think every, every business is going to have a different stance on it. We have our own stance on it. Yeah. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, it should be tied Personally, I think it should be tied to your uh, employment or the particular project that you're working on so that an artificial intelligence version of you is not saying things about something you've never even heard of or mm-hmm, said anything mm-hmm. about. Right. Yeah, I, I've got I'm in a similar situation. I've been doing videos for this company for 10 10- plus years in different varieties and different roles. So there's footage of me that's actually one of our most popular videos is me playing with this toy robot. Nice. Um, it was the Pleo robot. But back then, again, this was probably 10, 15 years ago. I didn't have the beard. I yep. didn't have the glasses. Yep. You know, I was much more handsome than I am now. Um, I have a hard time believing yeah, that. But okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's still on the site. And I don't mind that that's on the site because, again, it's personal branding. It's it's out there. It shows people that I sort of know what I'm doing. Yep. Uh, but the AI stuff does concern me. So I, I don't mind at that point the company allowing to have those rights and they can do whatever they want with those videos that have already been recorded. Yep. But when it comes to the AI, it feels like the talent and me, I should have rights over what they might use me to say in the future. Well, and then at the end of if 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 my employment ends or if my life ends then that's where it, the ai you should end so let me ask you this that robot what if the robot changed names and now they want to go and update that name you feel comfortable with well the ro- well do i feel comfortable about what if they if if they you if they clone your voice yeah and then have you say the the 2023 name of the robot yeah. as opposed to the 2013 name of the robot i i don't think they should no, I because I, again that video was a moment in time and that was what it was at the time and the the robot no longer exists anyway. But if it still did, like I I, I don't know. I I have some weird feelings about them changing. But I want that does bring up a point that you're talking about in using AI in the uh, almost the post production yep. experience and it can be beneficial for companies uh, to do that. So I don't know if you can explain or if you want me to t- tell you the example that I'm thinking of. Well. Um like, how are you using it in, in post-production to, to be more efficient? So first off, massive, massive implications with just AI transcription. Yeah. Because that is part of artificial intelligence. It's almost table stakes at this point where it turns video audio into text. Now you can see it. You can edit it like a Word document. Yep. Massive implications to the workflow. Now you don't have to listen. You've edited videos. Mm-hmm. You don't have to listen at double X and, and, and go through and try to find the, the moment that you want to clip out. You just search for the moment highlight it, clip it out. That's incredible. Where I, I've had some epiphanies with like workflow um, improvements has been around the synthetic voice. So, so often than not, you try to get your script locked before you go and shoot. Yep. And invariably, you, you shop it around all the stakeholders. Yep. Okay. Got, this is it. We're, yeah. we're locked. We're shooting tomorrow. Yeah. Last looks. Yeah. Okay, great. And then you shoot it. And then guess what? Something changes. The yeah. pr- your price of your product changes or you change the product name. Okay. I was just thinking that the person doing the voice pronounces a word wrong and maybe you didn't catch it. Sure. Yeah. Yep. hundred percent. But I'm a, you know, I'm an incredible director. I'm not going to let that happen. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll, no, I'll, no, I'll give you no, that one. no, no, no. That has happened time <laughs> yeah. and time again. So, um, and, and actually, you know, this is the example. So 
I recorded this this very long. It was a 12 minute video called the State of Video Report, um, and I was living in Wyoming at the time, so I I was working remotely. So I flew in, shot the video, flew back to Wyoming, and uh, we, I didn't have an opportunity. I realized that I messed up a line. Mm-hmm. I I messed up a line. I can't believe it. First time it ever happened in my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so, and, and, and I, I literally can't go back to the studio. I don't have, all I have is a laptop microphone. Yeah. I can't do a punch in. And so what I did was I took 60 seconds of my voice from that studio shoot, trained my, an, an artificial intelligence, uh, software called uh, 11 labs to yep. synthesize my voice. I typed in the text that I needed to say the the correct line reading no one would ever know. Wow. Okay. It was, it was earth shattering yeah, to me. Yeah. And, um, it's, it's, so the synthetic voice messing up cause that, that costs money. Right. Now, if you had a CEO in here and, and the, the same thing happened with the CEO in the old days, before you could do this, you would have had to bring the CEO back. The CEO would have had to either read the line again on audio or you'd have to reshoot. And then, and that just becomes a lot of money that, that, it's expensive to well, do. Well, yeah, especially yeah. if you don't have the luxury of having an in-person, you know, video crew. Now you're paying day rates, you're lighting, you're getting everything yeah. set up, and now you're bothering the CEO. Now you look bad. So there are there are crazy. This is just one example yeah, yeah. of of crazy real world applications that are going to that are already reshifting or reshaping the workflows of of editors. Yeah, talk about the podcast enhancer tool that you you had found. All right, because right. that's another that's another great story that that I think the the, the audience would love to hear. So. Um, we had a shoot at Wistia for our new product video, and we really wanted to push it outside of our studio. Uh-huh. And so we wanted to shoot on location. And so uh, we used a service called PeerSpace, which is almost like an Airbnb for <laughs> video photo shoots <clears throat> or conference room rentals. We found a, a, a space, and it looked great. So you have to request a book. So I requested a book. I said, hey, this is Chris from Wistia. I'm doing a video shoot, blah, blah, blah. And then they sent back, before they allowed me to book, they sent back this video, this pre-canned email they've clearly sent to a bunch of video producers. Warning, we know that you want to book our space. Mm-hmm. The audio is terrible. So if you need any audio for this, please reconsider now. Yeah. It's right on Route 90. Okay. There's construction going on next door. Yeah. Their walls are paper thin. There's steam heat. There's literally everything. I love that they're giving you a list of all of the I'm bad like, things ahead of time. Oh my God. Yeah, this, yeah, this yeah. So, so here's the kicker. Three months, if I hadn't gotten that email three months prior, I would have ran for the hills. Be like, mm-hmm. whoa, this guy, I just say, I just dodged a bullet here. But I was so cocky that I could make it work <laughs> because of an artificial intelligence tool uh-huh. by Adobe okay. called Podcast Enhance. Yeah. Where it literally works this simply you upload the bad audio as an mp3 yeah it does some combination of noise reduction synthetic voice and then spits back a beautiful sounding audio file as if it's it's actually modeled after an re20 the the microphone that we're working on now okay and so i was so cocky i'm like no problem we'll make it work yeah and i booked the shoe okay we got there and guess what it was everything as advertised as yeah. advertised yeah. terrible they were blasting drake next door the steam heat was going <laughs> nuts the windows were were paper thin there route 90 there were people honking and I'm, i i i did panic for a moment yeah. because we had one shot to do this we had we're up against the launch and the audio was bad yeah and i edited the video yeah and i exported the bad audio and i uploaded it to podcast yeah. podcast enhance and i'm a professional i have spent thousands of dollars working with audio engineers to do noise reduction. Yeah. And what Adobe spit out powered by artificial intelligence, no knobs, no nothing yeah. was remarkable. Now what in the, if you didn't have this tool, how long would it have taken to even get close? Cause sometimes you, you, if you adjust all of those settings and I've done some video editing and, and I've had bad audio yep. and you try, or you're trying to match two different microphone recordings and try to get it level. And it's just, it takes a long time, right? Yep. Like yep. how long would it have taken you as a professional to do this? I, it's above my pay grade. Yeah. I would have had a higher out. Okay. So I don't, my tools that I have at my disposal would have, it sounded like it would have been underwater. Yeah. The, the audio quality would have been all artifacted. I would have sent it to an audio engineer. They would have used tools like isotope or, you know, pro tools, logic, stuff like that. And, um, I actually challenged one of my audio engineer friends yep. to, to beat the AI. Yeah. Like, Hey, just throw, throw 10 minutes at this. I want to see if you can. And it wasn't even close. Yeah. 
not even close. So this is changing. This is changing the, my entire uh, the the way I'm thinking about on location shooting. Yeah, but does that does that then concern you in terms of the possibility that you, of jobs and you know instead of hiring out now that person that has that expertise might not get as much work as as he would before. Is that concerning you? Or I, or or does that person say, well? I don't have to do the garbage stuff and yeah. can focus now on fine tuning and really, really working on fun stuff. I honestly, or is there balance? I think it is a mixture yeah. of the both. I yeah. think there are going to be some jobs that are taken away by this. Yeah. Um, I know everyone has heard the adage at this point, or maybe not, but like, you're not going to be replaced by AI. You'll be replaced by somebody using AI. Yeah. And AI right now in my workflow as a video producer is doing a lot of the stuff I don't want to do. I don't yeah. want to transcribe a video. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, clean up audio. I yeah. don't want to have to pay somebody to clean up audio. So it's making my job way easier. And now I can focus on, I didn't think about the audio while I was on location. So I actually thought about the shots and the lighting yeah. and the blocking and the directing to make sure I had good line readings. See this audio engineer, this, this real professional should use the tools and then say that it took them three hours when it was really only three minutes. Funny. You should say that because I think we're in a gold rush right now Okay, because there are tools that, you know, like Wistia, where you upload your video, you okay, can. Okay, I, I can't let you do the commercial oh, yet. No, no. Okay, no Wistia. <laughs> okay. There are there are there, there are, are lots tools, of other tools out there. There are tools like okay, whatever. Other things. All right, keep going. Where you can <laughs> where you can basically say with one click of a button, say, um, take this forty five minute video and atomize it into a bunch of social clips. Yeah. Okay, and then oh, uh, what aspect ratio should those be? Do you want them to be nine by sixteen for TikTok, or yeah. do you want it to be square for LinkedIn? Okay, do that. That is taking so if you are a, if you're a company that doesn't know that AI can do that you're paying somebody yeah. to do that and if you're a video producer that's getting paid to do that you don't have to do that anyway so it's a gold rush for video producers yeah. that know about these tools and that's it, yes cuz we I've had this discussion with our, our video guy over here Chris and 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 initially he was like I don't really know if I want to learn these tools and I'm trying to convince him like you should learn as much as you can about the tool so that you make your job more valuable and then you don't have to tell him what you're using you just tell him how awesome you are i mean hey, I, hey yeah no no i'm just trying to try Chris. no it's just i cuz i i'm a little worried that it would essentially you know take over these jobs that, i mean even the garbage work is still work to yeah. them you know i you know what i mean it's still hours per here's day. why i think you're safe chris and you're and this is why you're safe chris cool. Chris, Thanks. Chris, both yeah. chris's this is why i think chris both you guys are safe the people that are would have to make the decisions about the um the jobs and whether they're they need some people or not are not the ones that were still in the in the trenches building these videos and creating these these this this content so it's if you can if you can convince those people that are making those decisions that you're still doing all of the work and you're still you know, and you're that you're more efficient maybe from these tools then that should be enough to 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 keep these jobs around. It's it's like, okay, I'm going to use a Star Trek reference. Oh, I'm in. All right. Do you remember the episode of Next Generation where they met old Scotty? Yes. Yeah. And he was talking to uh, LaForge about engineering. And he was, he, there was a great line in there. He's like, always promise them that it's going to take you four hours to do it. Even if you know that it's only going to take one, because then the captain thinks that you're a miracle worker when you get it done in one. Yeah. And it's that sort of attitude. Like yeah. over... No, under promise. No, no, never under promise. Over-promise. Yeah, under, under promise, promise over deliver. deliver. Yes. Right. So that could be applied in this case, right? Yeah. In theory. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a hundred percent. And like my optimistic view on these tools is that, you know, especially for content creation. So to have AI create something from nothing, you know, be it chat, be, uh, chat GPT to, with, uh, you know, a prompt to text or be it mid journey or stable diffusion text to video or text to photo. Yeah we're still in a moment where AI is pretty soulless. Like, yeah. Like everyone from a creativity from standpoint. A creativity, yeah. it, so, so if you can use the other AI tools to, you know, such as chat GPT to summarize uh, a transcript into a blog post, um, then you can, you could, you could spend the time like actually being able to differentiate yourself, your vision, your story yeah. with whatever medium it is. If it's audio, if it's video, if it's painting, um, 
you, now is the opportunity to bring real humanity back in, to bring the soul in, because the com- the competition we're we're looking down, uh, we're we're looking at a sea of just mediocre content that's being generated right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so if you can sip, de- differentiate by getting real live human beings from your business on camera, yeah, and real live human beings on your podcast. And like, you know, sharing experiences in a blog post that, that an AI wouldn't be able to really, um, emulate or replicate. Yeah. Have you, have you used any of these AI avatar avatar tools? We'll fix that in post, right? (laughs) With the AI. Yeah, right. Uh, Have you used any of these avatar technologies in your videos yet? Or Uh, just as a joke. Okay. So you haven't done anything. I made it a whole, I made, I made a whole, uh, soap opera. Okay. Out of, um, <laughs> it, it was a, it was a, it was a corporate soap opera that I have chat GPT, right? It was called yep. days, days of our work lives. Okay. And I had chat GPT, write The script and I literally copied and pasted it into, um, Synthesia, which is a AI avatar. Yeah. And, and it comes out and I made it almost as like a commentary of just how soulless these things are right now. Yeah. But you can't judge this right now because everything's going to get better. Right. Um, but another huge, so, so the reason I asked that was I was yeah. wondering if you as a company feel like you should announce it, that this is an AI avatar or, I mean, mm. at this point, we're probably still at that phase where you can tell yep. between, you know, cause obviously my, my AI avatar is not going to go like this all of a sudden. I think it does they're gonna be like, I've got a glitch. Well, that's what I was going to say. I was like right now, the, another, another cheat to make sure to let you know that you're not using AI is just do, do, do this. Like you can't do that with an AI avatar yeah. or do, do this, turn around. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, to answer your question, I think it's more important. I think it's going to be more important to say made by humans, like crafted oh, by a human. Okay. This is, this is made by a human. Yeah. And, and what does that get you? That gets you, um, you know, the buy-in from your audience that you actually spent time crafting this as opposed to just copy and pasting some yeah. BS. And gives you know, you, gives you some level of trust too. I, I would, think so. I, would imagine. I, I think it means like using what you just said, I think that kind of signifies quality or a higher quality. Yeah. You yeah. Know what I mean, it's kind of like buying a piece of furniture at Ikea or buying a piece of furniture from a, like a craftsman, a woodworker. Yeah. It's like you have that, you know, extra hours put in to make it perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the fishing part of it as well with the executives that even if they, you know, maybe there's a company out there that doesn't have an audio production company or, you know, audio production group, or they're not interested in doing marketing videos or any of this other stuff. If, if they did, I'd say like, why, why aren't you? Yeah. Everyone, I mean, this thing can film. Yeah. Come on. Um, Yeah. You know, how do we get the executives to be aware of some of these AI tools and technologies? And I, I would say the CEOs and the CFO should at least know, be aware of potential audio phishing schemes, right? Yeah, th- this is where I, I think we are starting to see more mainstream um, awareness yeah. around this, which is, I think, helpful. Yeah. You know, having a safe word for your family, <laughs> you know, yeah. as opposed to, oh, my God, I, I'm in trouble. I need $100,000 wired by yep. Western Union right away. Um, but, but yeah, I think. You know, this is where regulation would be really nice, but I think, you know, the government moves at a snail's pace and regulation can't even keep up to the technology. And I think the ship has sailed too, yeah, because yeah. like, uh, you know, where I was going with that was, it would be nice if there was like a, um, like a blueprint, like a digital blueprint on the waveform deep, deep within the deep buried within the waveform. If yeah. there's a, a way to identify if a, if a voice is real or not. Um, and I think there are some companies working on that deep fake detector um, to, de- to determine when yeah, somebody is. Yeah. But I think you got to kind of go analog with some of it. Have a, have a safe word. And, you know, I think be more um, vigilant with being proactive about, hey, these things could exist, um, especially from the CEO, CFO perspective, where we get hit with those all the time at Wistia. And we're yeah. only one one company in Cambridge. You know, I'm sure this is happening all over the world right yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, Chris from Wistia. Thank you so much. Or oh, Chris Levine. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Chris Levine. Chris, Chris from Chris from Wistia is almost like your different personality. I know. Right? And it could be AI, could be me. You never know. (laughs) All right. Thanks for joining us on the show today. Yeah. Thank you for having me. All right. That's all the time we've got for today's episode. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, add any thoughts that you have below. Join us every week for new episodes of Today in Tech. I'm Keith Shaw. Thanks for watching.